Hi, my name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv, and this is Headlines You May Have Missed. And you can get all the archive shows as well as the show notes for this particular show at isheadlines.com. That's it, isheadlines.com. So the title of this show is Big Social is Gov Social. And here's proof. This is your headlines you may have missed for Thursday, January 18th, 2018. On this episode, we will be talking about big social propaganda, Rahavan Shine bat signal, Catalonia's lawyers suck, 3D print consumption, World Bank globalism. That's a shock, huh? And more. And if you don't know the format of the show, let me explain it to you real briefly. What we do is we pick uh, headlines that you may have missed. We pick a bunch of them. We have 50 or 60 of them on any given day that, that's actually included in the show notes. And what we do is we try and see how many headlines we can get to in the span of 20 minutes. So we are going to, we're about ready to hit that timer and here well let me let me let me get it pro pro, pro well, get everything ready and here we go here's your 20 minutes first headline big social tell gov they're working on anti-terror counter propaganda facebook google tell congress they're fighting extremist content with pro counter propaganda that's 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 always good to hear and this is from CNBC so remember CNBC is definitely a uh, state friendly news outlet so remember that when you're reading from that site uh, from CNBC Facebook Google and Twitter told Congress Wednesday that they're going be gonna gone that they've gone beyond screening and removing extremist content and are creating more anti-terror propaganda to preempt violent messages at their source. Representatives from the three companies told the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation that they are, among other things, targeting people likely to be swayed by extremist messages and pushing content aimed at countering that message. Several senators criticized their past efforts as not going far enough. We believe that a key part of combating extremism is preventing recruitment by disrupting the underlying ideologies that drive people to commit acts of violence. That's why we support a variety of counter-speech efforts, said Monica Bickert, Facebook's head of global policy management. And uh, Facebook's also working with universities, non-governmental organizations, and communities around the world to empower positive and moderate voices. I don't know what that means by positive. I don't know what it means by moderate. I don't know how they're defining a terrorist. I mean, some of it's probably an easy call if you're screaming things like we should go around beheading people because of their religion. Hey! I think I'm okay calling you a terrorist, but if you're going around screaming things like, you know, maybe maybe police shouldn't shoot people in the back, maybe you're not a terrorist. However, maybe Facebook will consider you a terrorist. Who gets to define terrorist? And why is it that the social media has now taken it upon themselves to enter into the realm of quote-unquote counter-propaganda? Remember, one man's terrorist and another man's freedom fighter. Well, one man's counter-propaganda is another man's propaganda. Hence the title of this episode, which is uh, Big Social is Gov Social. We'll move on to our next headline. Rahavans seek help from UN to thwart Turkish threat. So as Turkey bears down on Rahava, the Rahavans are now considering, well, they're actually seeking relief from the UN. 
So the Syrian Kurds are calling on the UN Security Council to send a message to Turkey that their region must remain unmolested by Turkish aggression. And I'm, I'm staying on top of this story because even while we're doing the show, it's possible that Turkey has launched an attack. It's, it's that imminent. So I'm... I'm, I'm watching this story very, very carefully. So they're, they're appealing to the UN uh, to, to try to maybe <laughs> discourage the Turks from doing what the Turks, Turks seem to want to do. So this is from ABC News, Syria's dominant Kurdish party on Wednesday, called on the United Security, United Nations Security Council to act quickly to ensure the safety of Kurdish-controlled territories in the country's north, including an enclave clave that Turkey has threatened to attack. And that's exactly where Turkey is poised, in this enclave. There's Rahava is not a contiguous region. There's uh, the, the eastern part of Rahava is a, the large block. And then there's this little western outcrop, which I don't know how many miles away it is from the eastern block area, but that little that little western outcrop, that's what the Turks are, are targeting. So Turkish President uh, Erdogan has said he will launch a military offensive in the coming days against territories controlled by the dominant Syri Syrian Kurdish militia. By the way, referencing the story uh, before this, if Facebook is going to work with Turkey hand in hand, then Facebook is going to have to put out counter propaganda to the Kurds because the Turks are labeling them terrorists. So so that's that's the minefield that you've opened up Facebook and Twitter. You've set yourself up to be really, really accountable to the government at a level that uh, they're going to expect you to create content that advances their narrative. You know, you know, in the name of of, of freedom and patriotism and stuff. Next headline: Catalan governor. Well, excuse me, Catalan. Yeah. Catalan government lawyers say Skype presidency is not legal. And I'll reword that in another way. Uh, Catalan lawyers suck. Well, not Catalan. Catalan government lawyers suck. So it seems that the Catalan government lawyers are trying to throw a monkey wrench into the plans to install the Skype presidency of exiled president and leader Carle Puigdemont. The lawyers are saying that Puigdemont cannot be sworn in remotely because regulations do not allow it. So this is from the site The National. Lawyers for the Catalan government have said it is essential that a nominee for president must be physically present in the parliamentary chamber for debate and voting. In an advisory report, the legal experts said regulations prevented a president being sworn in at a distance via Skype, for instance, as deposed President Carle Puigdemont planned to do from exile in Brussels. So uh, <laughs> all the folks that, the, uh, that, that Madrid wanted to get rid of were kind of re-elected in the December 21st election, and now those exiled leaders mean to still lead. So... <laughs> Sorry for you, Madrid. And and once again, uh, the Catalan government lawyers suck, objectively. Next headline. Metal 3D printing now creating consumer products like faucets. So I'll read a little bit from this uh, story here. This is from Automation World. And there's a video, and if you go to isheadlines.com, you can get all the show notes for this show, including the links to all the stories. And in this story that I'm talking about right now, there's a nice little video for you to, to watch. So, uh, Callista, a designer of kitchen and bathroom fixtures, is using 3D printing to create its new grid faucet. Produced using 3D Systems Direct Metal Printing, the grid faucet is made in a combination of inner oxygen-free 3D printing environments using metal alloy powder materials and integrated software for metal additive design to produce parts within hours. To avoid you see it, produce parts within hours. To avoid rust and corrosion issues from long-term use, the faucets are printed with 3D systems, laser form, well, whatever. I don't 
need to read all of that. Uh, the 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 real point of this is, and I'll just read what they ha what they say at the end here. Well, the end of this excerpt. Though 3D printing of consumer products is still far from commonplace, the grid faucet is not the first example of a 3D printed faucet to hit the market. DVX began offering 3D printed products in 2015, and you're going to start to see it more and more. A lot of I remember, I remember I I wrote an article and it was on the Daily Sheeple, and it was about the revolutions in 3D printing, 3D metal printing specifically, and somebody was writing on there, oh yeah, 3D metal printing, oh that's great, that's real. You know, that's not even durable. It's a joke. And yeah, it's it's not a joke, folks. It's not a joke. And it's advancing at, at rapid pace. And you're gonna start to see more and more of this of this 3D printing actually delivering products to your home. Companies are gonna start using 3D printing, and then you're gonna start to see the evolution of designs, which well, we live in an IP world, and that's another conversation in of itself but you'll be able to buy designs that you can use on your 3d printers to build the products that you want or to print the products that you want so 3d printing man it's 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 a topic that i cover with regularity on iState.tv because i believe it's it's one of the key liberty enabling technologies that are emerging today i go on to my next headline World Bank divests of fossil fuels in separation from U.S. So, it seems that President Donald J. Trump is not global enough in his approach, though the purveyors of the formation of world governance couch the divide in the narrative of either being for saving the planet the fight against climate change, or hating the planet, not wanting to concede to the formation of a world government for the sake of saving the planet. So the World Bank is making it clear that it intends on going full bore with its noble goal of saving the planet by divesting its interests in fossil fuels. And after you read the excerpt from, well, I'm going to read part from it, but if you're on the uh, if you go to isheadlines.com and you, you access this article, I encourage you, after you read the excerpt that I include from the Pro World Bank article in the conversation, to watch the video that I've embedded in this article from the Cor Corbett Report on why big oil conquered the world, to get a, to get a behind-the-curtain understanding of what's really going on with this seeming noble shift by the World Bank. So this is from the conversation. The World Bank, which provides developing countries about $60 billion a year in financial assistance with lots of strings attached. They're not going to say that, though. Is officially phasing out its support for the oil and gas industries. This move brings its actions more in sync with its overarching commitment to slowing the pace of climate change and keeping the Paris Agreement on track. Based now, this is this guy writing, not me. Based on my research regarding international relations, I see this move, which World Bank President Jim Kong Jim Yong Kim announced in December, as significant for two reasons. I think, yeah, okay, well, uh, I'm not going to read all that. So Kim has been taking the World Bank in a direction that climate change activists and other critics have been advocated by positioning the institution as a global environmental leader since he became its president in 2012. And then the last thing I'll read from this, the bank's climate efforts are wide-ranging. It tends it lends money to build solar and wind farms, requires its borrowers to take steps to shrink their carbon footprints, requires borrowers to take steps to shrink their carbon footprints, and has a whole of greening the whole financial system. Yeah, the World Bank, it's, it's, it's one of the great evils in the world today. It is literally worse than Hitler, but only because it has more power and has a lot more time to destroy more lives uh, directly and or indirectly than, than Hitler did. Our next headline, Twit 
sues Twitter over trademark. I, I don't. I I love this headline. I wrote it, so you know I'm loving myself, I guess. But <laughs> it sues Twitter over trademark. I I it just sings. It just it's just a, it's a it's a headline that you want to repeat over and over again. Not 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 because of what it means, just because of what it sounds. Twit sues Twitter over trademark. I mean that's. That sings. That's poetry right there. So Twitter faces tra trademark infringement lawsuit from Podcast Network. So Twit is a podcast network, and this is from the site Engadget. Now Twit has been around. Well, I'll I'll read I'll read from the excerpt here. So Twit, aka This Week in Tech, is suing Twitter. The well-known tech netcast says Twitter has broken a number of written and oral agreements and is infringing on its trademark. The two companies started up around the same time in the mid-2000s with Twitter co-founder Evan Williams telling Twit's Leo Laporte that, by the way, Leo Laporte's a pretty cool dude. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about uh, suing people over trademarks, but still. It still amuses me to oh no end that it's happening, uh, but anyway, uh, the the Leo Laporte uh, uh, th that Twitter was simply a a text based microblogging service. That's that's what they were told in the beginning. So the two informally agreed that despite the similarities in their names, their platforms were fundamentally different and were happy to coexist on the condition the lawsuit alleges of each coming company continuing its own distribution platform. As far as Twitter is concerned, that is no longer case the case. So on that grounds, Twit is suing Twitter. Twit suing Twitter. Twit is suing Twitter. If you're watching this show, I want you to say that out loud. Go ahead, say that out loud, and I'll read the comments later if anybody actually did it. And if you derive the pleasure of, from the, the 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 burst of sounds that I did from saying Twit sues Twitter. Twit sues Twitter. I'll go on to my next headline. Trump reconsiders NAFTA. Whoa, here comes the new boss. Same as the... Yeah, how's the rest of that go? So, I mean, this is a big part of his campaign, and he did. He did carry through with his campaign promise. He ended, he ended the NAFTA agreement. But now, and this is from Bloomberg, President Donald Trump has come to see that NAFTA has some ben benefits to the U.S., particularly for farming, even as he stays firm and is a demand for a new dare. deal. Agricultural Secretary Sony Perdue says. So uh, talks to revamp the North American Free Trade Agreement will continue in Canada this month with the deal's fate unclear. Trump and House Speaker Paul Ryan each said last week they'd rather renegotiate than walk away from the pact with Canada and Mexico altogether. Though Trump reiterated his threat to pull out, Canadian officials said last week they believe the odds are rising that Trump will give notice of NAFTA withdrawal. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not so much. I guess, I guess we'll find out. He's sending overtures that, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm seeing, maybe I'm seeing that NAFTA is not a bad thing. It is, by the way, NAFTA is a bad thing, but that would be a whole other show in and of itself. Our next headline. China signals war against cryptos is only beginning. So China makes it clear that it fully intends to go after cryptocurrencies and the users until it destroys all trading in the country. And to that I say, good luck China. And this is from Channel News Asia. China is preparing for a new crackdown, crackdown on cryptocurrency, planning to stamp out remaining trading in the country, according to state media. China will gradually clean up over-the-counter trading platforms, good luck with that. Peer-to-peer -peer networks, uh, really, especially good luck with that. Where large exchanges occur and firms registered in the country which allow Chinese to trade overseas. They could probably cramp down on that pretty easily. The state-run Securities Journal said Tuesday, January 16th. The publication cited an anonymous source close to regulators tackling online, online finance risk. You can bet that this news... He's not going to help the crypto price. 
Next headline, France threatens to regulate tax and even ban cryptocurrencies. Are you sensing a trend here, folks? The pushback against cryptocurrencies from nation states that rely on central fiat currency to, in part, maintain their hold on power is only increasing in the last few weeks. France joins a growing list of nation states that are working on developing regulation strategies, possibly even considering banning all or some currencies altogether. And this is from Metro.co uh, UK. The French finance minister has called for tough new regulations on cryptocurrencies to stop them being used to dodge tax or finance terrorism and or other crimes. In a speech today, Bruno Le Maire said he has ordered a former central bank chief to draft potential new rules warning against the risk of speculation and possible financial manipulation linked to Bitcoin, and other such currencies. And our last headline that I've selected here is China criminalizes religious assembly in Muslim province. China's government has banned children from attending religious events over the winter break in Lingxia, a predominantly Muslim country in the province of Gansu, as the Chinese Communist Party ramps up control of religious education. Now let's get to let's get to the headlines that we didn't get to, and I'll just read off as many as I can. Girthers take over Twitter after Trump's medical report released. Gotta love them girthers. Russia moves to create its own internet. Catalonia's parliament chooses independence. Still, we kind of touched on that. CES 2018 shows how IoT, Internet of Things, has gone mainstream. World's first blockchain driven by AI comes online. Gun groups protest Washington gun grabber bills. Delaware considers bill banning gun ownership for people with mental illnesses. And carbon fibers from plants, the ramifications are clean. And there you go. That's it. That is your headlines you may have missed for the day of January 18th, 2018. On Thursday, I encourage all of you to go to isheadlines.com. That's isheadlines.com. And you can look at all of the archives for the shows uh, in in probably within a half hour of this show being over. I should, if I, if I don't have a technical glitch, I should have the Facebook video embedded, the YouTube video embedded, along with the audio if you want to listen to the show in audio form uh, on this show notes page. So that's that's it for this day. Join us tonight on the Liberty Principle Facebook page where I will be joined by Lou Sander of the Freedom Fiends, who is also my co-host on Is Daily Thursday. And we're we're going to be talking about a crypto anarchist from India that you may never have heard of. I just learned about him recently, but he uses tech. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say he uses police state tech to combat police state tech. It should be an interesting conversation. And I will be back here on this same on my Facebook page tomorrow. At 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a uh, Friday edition of Headlines You May Have Missed. And right now I'm ready to go on over to the Sovereignty Network's Facebook page so I can check out uh, Crypto Corner Live with Kurt Walker Jr. and find out what's going on with my cryptos. And that's all I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow on Headlines You May Have Missed and tonight on Is Daily. Remember, remember this, folks. Those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Bear that in mind whenever you're reading the news, which is working in any way, shape, or form, hand-in-hand hand with the state.